We are, we've heard all about the data. Joanna's framed it, Luis has framed it, the data, 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 the issues, the issues, issues. We're not gonna go into all those issues. <laughs> Done. We're gonna tell you how we are addressing them. Because I think that's, I'm very solution oriented, I'm very like, hands in the ground, let's do it. Dig in the dirt, do the street outreach. I mean like, out there at two o'clock in the morning. So we're gonna show you how we're addressing these issues at Tri-City Health Center in Fremont. So a little brief on Alameda County, because people go, oh, it's hard to say Fremont, they go, what Fremont? And then we go, okay, let's explain it. So we always have to kind of, let's just do a little slide demographic. So Alameda County is across the bay from San Francisco. There's a bridge, there's a tunnel under the bridge, there's a BART under the bridge, right? So when you go to the Mecca, there's another area across, and we all know that Oakland is also an epidemic, right? It's kind of a shadow city. You have Baltimore in the shadow of DC, Oakland's in the shadow of San Francisco. I call it the land of plenty. And then when you get across the bridge, yeah, okay. So Fremont is down here. Literally goes Oakland, Fremont, San Jose. Oh, I know where San Jose is, there's a song. Do you know the way to San Jose? Like, we know Oakland, the Raiders, the A's, where's Fremont? But we service all Alameda County, because it's called the Alameda County Office of AIDS Administration, and we're one of, they're one of the Ryan White um, Planning Council, which I served for four years, and I did not get in a fight with anybody on because I got this a lot, but I didn't hit him. Okay, so we are an FQHC community-based health center in Fremont, which is huge demographically, as you see, um, and then we go into Contra Costa, and our planning council is also Contra Costa and Alameda County. Um, we do comprehensive programs. We started as a family planning clinic in a house in 1970 and expanded HIV care and prevention started in the 90s. And I'm really excited to have our former HIV program manager, supervisor of prevention and care who hired me in 2002. And we co-created the transgender program after she fought and fought and said we need services because up until 2002, the only transgender services in this county were HIV-based prevention at AIDS Project of East Bay up here in Oakland. Nothing else. And so I want to introduce Lisa Carver over here, who helped cook. She hired me, brought me away from Hollywood, where I was casting movies. I had been working in the 90s in the trenches doing, um, in the AIDS epidemic um, with LGBT youth and doing fundraising stuff. Okay, so we're gonna move to the next slide. So this is where we're at. Transvision, a little bit of us. Okay, move, awards, they're nice. <laughs> Get you forward, but um, plaques on the wall don't save lives. Okay. <laughs> well, it helps, but. So one of the reasons why we applied for this initiative is because we started in 2010 one of the only trans clinics for primary care in Alameda County and in Northern California. We had a clinic, why not? If you add hormones, they will come. Yeah. Right? And then, oh, well, maybe I'll take an HIV test. Oh, maybe I'll do a cholesterol test, right? So we're trying to change everything. Prior to the clinic, you know, we kept going, do you do hormones? No, and I'm like, we're a clinic. And so we fought for that, and we got it. And so right now we have around 320 clients that come literally from all over Northern California, and we have clients from the state, and I have two coming in from out of country. I have one from Canada and one from London. Um, so we do pro everything. It's all trans affirming. And this is one of the biggest things right here. We do the client navigation, free name change assistance. We do a legal service because we've all on my team, except for Terry, have gone through the name change process. We know how to do it. We offer it free. We did over 60 name change applications last year. We will go to court and navigate. We will go to court and translate for you because it's the next step, right? Go on hormones, then you're gonna have to change your identity documents, so we do it right there, one stop shop. That's been huge. We actually did a Latina trans woman came in the other day, this month, she wanted to do name change. We asked her to do an HIV test. She said no. But in order to do name change, you have to be a client. We did one round of visits, and her labs came up HIV positive. She, she declined testing. She came for name change. And we enrolled her in the brain and child project. Next. Transgender team approach. Same thing, empowerment. We do informed consent. We are empowering you to make your own healthcare decisions. We will tell you your risks and benefits as part of a whole hour counseling session with our team. And this is our team. And the team approach, nothing different here than, than basic models. Next. Okay, form consent. And it's important to talk about the primary care because a lot of trans programs or HIV programs and care programs has a different, it's like this is your trans care and this is your HIV care, we combine it. Because that helps with retention and it helps. They're coming, they don't want to take their HIV meds, they want to take the hormones. 
give them their hormones, they'll take their HIV meds. They'll take their HIV meds, their hormones, they're like, girl. Well, it's all cute that you're on hormones, but if you're dead because you don't take HIV meds, the hormones ain't doing nothing for you. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna take my hormone. I'll take both. Okay. <clears throat> you have one pill called Tripla. Okay, next. This is our new space. We just moved. As you see the walk in. When they see the trans pride flag, they know where they're at. Part of having a safe, affirming space. Um, we have some Vienna Stars posters up there. That's uh, friends from research, Angela. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we just want them to be very safe. A lot of, uh, and then the exam rooms are around the back. Next. Okay, you want to get to the meat. This is Janet, one of our program uh, team members. She's also a trained medical assistant. And so having somebody, one of your peers, taking your blood pressure is very huge. So she gets it. She helps with does all of our pharmacy prescriptions. Like, girl, I didn't do my hormones. I forgot my prescription. Janet will handle it. She's on the form, far on the phone, dealing with pharmacies and everything. Next, um, one of our exam rooms. We have notice when you walk in the room, you're going to have a. It's specifically geared towards trans women and trans men, and we also have about five percent of our clients identify as non-binary, gender neutral, gender queer. So we try to have make sure that everything we do reflects the community we serve. Next, prevention, basic prevention components, same thing that most other programs do. Okay, move. They love flashing me. Okay. So here's the initiative. They do in that two minute time mess all the time. Right? Okay. Girl, I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> Who else gets to tell you I'm cute? Okay. All right. All right. So here's our Brandy Martell initiative. And the two main components of it, so she already explained the initiative, but here's the thing that she didn't tell you. She said it was you know, the most comprehensive study to date, funding done. This is an unprecedented opportunity at the federal level to talk about transgender women of color. Did I make myself clear? And the issues that trans women of color face at the federal level. And that's why I'm excited about this. So we came up and I created the interventions based on Everything we've gone through in the last 10 years, a legal clinic to address the incarceration issues and the revolving door in Alameda County, so I don't have to go to court, because I'm good, but I'm not a lawyer. And a living real program based on our, um, we had a homegrown group intervention that also dealt with some of the trauma issues. We made dolls, we did masks that uh, had the clients do masks that said, you know, how do you see yourself? And then they would make the mask, they would say, how do you think the world sees you? And they'd create a mask of how, uh, well, all the materials, feathers, rhinestones, everything, markers. And then on the inside, we said, how do you see yourself? And it was amazing to see the difference of how they thought people saw them and how they viewed themselves. It was healing. We had uh, a doll making project based off our cancer model. We had black and brown dolls, and they created a model of themselves using sewing. And it was just amazing. We still have a bunch of those dolls. So that kind of helped some of the trauma. Um, this is a curriculum, you know, a lot of HIV prevention-based programs, you, everything has to be HIV. So, okay, you have group, but it has to be HIV. We get to talk about employment issues, we get to talk about domestic violence, we get to talk about the things that you can't cover in traditional HIV programs. Next. And so Terry's going to really talk about that, because he does a lot of the coordinating of the living room. This is the Brandy Martell Project. There, we, have our, we have shirts made. Let me tell you about Brandy really quick. And that's Brandy. So again, she is the 43rd homicide of Oakland, shot to death in 2012 at 5.30 in the morning. Her murder is still unsolved. Brandy was one of our team members. I hired her in 2007. She sat across from me in my office. I took that picture in 2009. We were um, working at the gay prom um, with LGBT youth. Tiffany, is that the 43rd transgender? 43rd murder in Oakland that year, there's 121. We had not had a homicide of a trans woman of color, of any trans woman since 1995. And she was the first one since. In Oakland. In Oakland. And so, one of the reasons we named it the Brandy Montel Project in honor of Brandy, so she can continue to help her friends, who are many of her clients, but we cannot link you to HIV care. We cannot retain you in HIV care. And we definitely can't get you on treatment adherence if you're a trans woman of color and you're dead in the streets. So unless we, as a society, 
collectively address violence against trans women of color, 